Um, me being a student of life, I consider myself a student of life, so I study all life around me. Now, you know, I, of course, of course, in this day and time, man, you know, the gods, it's funny because when I was going to meet the God, I mean, exact, I went into a store and I went to buy some things, and um, <laughs> the Arab in the store, uh, he, he, he came across kind of arrogant to me. And I said, I was in this neighborhood way before you, and my parents were here way before you. And he said, what does that have to do with anything? And I said, that's a great question. You know, and I said, there was a time where if you had a store here, you had to give people in the community a job. See, now they, they can come in these, our neighborhoods and we'll support them and patronize them, and they don't have, they feel they're not, they're not obligated to give any of us any employment. See, but that's the difference of the era I came up in. And as I was walking to go meet the God, I got a little frustrated because I was like, as, as, as in my mind, I had a conversation with the God. And I pictured myself telling the God, yo, man, yo, God, this war is getting, this war is getting heavy because, you know, we looked at as being a dying breed and we looked at as being, you know, small and minimal because you couldn't, the Arab couldn't do that back in the days. But now he's allowed to do it because there's less of us you know, living out our true and living duties. You know what I'm saying? Which is community too. Uplifting our community. And uplifting the community is showing a certain amount of responsibility for the community. And in doing that, you take on an obligation of the community. So therefore, you're not gonna let just anything come in your community and just do what it wants without feeding the community. It's, 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 it gets frustrating because now that, you know, being a God and being true and living, it's like, the more we go on and move into this future, the more we realize, you know, how how sick the, how sick the devil is and how much he has his tail wrapped around, you know what I'm saying, our people. Because, you know, you got these dudes coming in here, and I'm not knocking, they doing what they supposed to do. So I'm not knocking them and saying they shouldn't eat. You know what I'm saying, that's not what it's about. But, you know, they're taking on a certain amount of arrogancy because we've allowed them to do that. You know, we stop taking a stance and we stop being strong and stop being pillars on the whole. I'm not saying that there's not God's doing it. I'm not saying that there's not Earth's doing it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that there are people outside of the nations and God's and Earth that are 5% because there's a difference to me. You know what I'm saying? And being, being belonging to the nation and God's and Earth or being a 5%er. You can have 5%er in different fashions of, of so-called religion of, or society. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that there's people that there's not people taking that stance, but it's so far and few and in between that a lot of us get wiped out or outnumbered because we look so small and we don't look, we're not as strong as we once were when we were deemed as being militants or being radical. You know, sometimes you gotta be radical. Sometimes you gotta be militant. There's no greater militancy than the American government. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the highest manifestations of physical militancy. Just look at what they do. But again, that's that technology that they'll spin on you and that we don't want to be looked at as militant. It takes militancy to save a nation. It takes militancy to uphold the people in a culture. So if you lack any of that in any type of way, then your, your culture's gonna lack. Your people are gonna lack. You know, case in point of the Arab having a store and there's no African so-called original people working in that store.